this is the audio circuit uh, that will be going into the uh, FGM gradiometer uh, units for detections of ferrous and magnetic anomalies um, underground. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm using uh, the Mozzie Arduino Synthesis Library and uh, because it's so s CPU intensive um, meaning that uh, if you do a lot of other tasks and subroutines while running Mozzie uh, you're gonna get some audio glitches some uh, skips and delays in your audio so what I've decided to do is uh, in the design I'm gonna go with a AT Mega 328 in a surface mount package and I'll be using it um, it'll be programmed to be essentially uh, an audio uh, codec or a, just an audio driver IC um, I chose this over uh, some other voltage controlled oscillator circuits like the 555 timer and other chips um, so I've got pretty much everything mocked up here and the software is working um, there will be a few changes which I'll show you in a minute but uh, out in the field you usually uh, have uh, either a speaker which I'll be replacing the five and a quarter inch speaker with a PZO um, just loud enough that you can hear it um, or you can uh, plug a set of headphones into the headphone jack and uh, I chose a jack that um, find my audio cable it's a mono signal, but it'll come over. It'll come over both ears, and these have switches inside. So when I insert the audio jack, the speaker will automatically be muted. So now the audio would be coming over the headphones, and the speaker is automatically taken out of circuit. And when you unplug it, then you get your um, audio back of your speaker so that removes the need to pause Mozzie um, in software uh, to pause the speaker I'm still using a 100 ohm pot right there as my uh, variable voltage source which is going to an analog pin so if I crank that potentiometer up or down the frequency will change with the voltage um, right now I've got a few digital switches and a few analog inputs to control the type of sound that you're getting now which right now you're getting um, sort of a pinging sound um, if I tie that pin uh, let's see where it's at. It's tied high right now. If I tie that pin low, I'm doing it manually now, but later this would be done through software. Then you just get a steady tone. Uh, the potentiometer has two functions. When you're in a steady tone mode, uh, this potentiometer will adjust the volume through software. I'm sorry. I'm getting my potentiometers mixed up. This will change your center frequency. Um, so I've got it set up with three center frequencies. Uh, turning the pot all, all the way down will give you its lowest, which is kind of a uh, low frequency sound around 500 hertz. Um, and I've got all these values being printed out so right now I'm at about it's right around 490 500 Hertz 
is to turn the pot up, the center frequency, um, if you wish to have a, a higher uh, pitch, this will allow you to have different center frequencies for lower and higher pitches. So if we go to the next setting, we're up around 800 hertz. And I can add more center frequencies if I wish, if I wish to. I may add one more, but I think getting above 2 kilohertz is going to be too hard on the ears. And the highest one will put us up around 1 kilohertz. So we're right at 1 kilohertz. And then as the voltage varies, it'll dip above or below that. So that gives you three center frequencies, whether it's in ping mode or a constant tone mode. Um, right now I'm adjusting the volume through serial commands. I'm using a capital A to increase the volume and a lowercase a to decrease the volume. Uh, but I'll be doing that later through software uh, without any kind of entry. Um, it also has the effect uh, if you are in ping mode, which I'll go back to ping mode by tying this high. And let me turn the frequency up so you can hear it better. Okay, now you got the ping type of output. Um, when it's in ping mode, adjusting the volume will change the modulation and speed of the ping. So right now uh, we've got a, I'm, I'm using pulse width modulation to do this. Uh, so right now the, PD, the PWM signal is maxed out so entering a lowercase a each a will decrement it by five and if I put a few of these in you'll hear the change in the modulation and the speed of the ping Now it's got a wobbly kind of sound. It just depends on what your ear likes out in the field. Because if you're out doing surveys, you're going to be listening to this all day. So you may. That's kind of a nice sound right there. It's got a bit of a modulated wobble in it. But we'll go down a few more and see what it sounds like. It's got the same wobble, but the pings are faster. Let's go down even more. Now you're getting more of a kind of a square wave sound. So there's a wide variety of uh, modulated sounds that I can get with this technique. Now you've got a really fast ping. Now you got a ping that's really quick with a really short decay. Sounds a bit digital. And let's go down even more. Okay. Instead of halfway seems to be the smoothest. It's about a ping every two pings every second. And it seems to sound the best. I'll change the center frequency and we'll hear it in three different tones. That's a really smooth FM sound, I like that. Okay, that's the lowest. It's 500 hertz. 750 hertz. And one kilohertz. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a constant tone mode, and we'll do that by changing this pin back to low. Now we've got a steady tone. 
and we can still change the center frequency and their octaves of each other but in a steady tone mode now when I adjust the volume um, I'll increase the volume enter a capital A, I'll enter a few of them uh, this will just make the amplitude louder and there is a bit of a this is what I was talking about when using Mozzie you can hear the uh, interruption in the code as it's trying to generate the oscillations there's eight oscillators um, I'll be able to smooth that out with some more uh, it's probably all the serial prints are, are eating up CPU cycles and this is only for debugging so once I'm satisfied and I get rid of all this debugging that awful sound will probably go away but the volume is increasing as I increase the PWM signal was Jackson, you should be able to hear a difference. That's not even full volume. Okay, that's full volume. Now I'll enter a bunch of lower capital A's and you should hear the volume decrease. And that works. Okay. But the last step I'll do is instead of using analog potentiometers, everything on the gradiometer unit from your LCD menu displays to adjusting your volume, adjusting your center frequency, and the type of tone and the modulation will all be done with a single rotary encoder. Uh, the intent is to, this is one with a push button switch, so clicking the switch will give you your different options which will show up on the LCD and then turning it left or right will turn things off, adjust volume, uh, change your center frequency and also perform all of the other uh, functions of the gradient, uh, taking a reading um, these will these gradiometer units will first come out as a basic design with the LCD um, the controls speaker headphone output and an LCD display but they'll be upgradable later uh, you'll be able to add a GPS module for GPS logging um, it'll store your GPS coordinates. Uh, it'll have a real-time clock. It'll store your heading, and for each GPS coordinate, uh, when you take a reading, that data will be saved onto the GPS logger card as well, and all that goes onto an SD card. And then the idea is once you uh, take all of your samples and leave the field you'll be able to take out the SD card put it into your computer and I'll write a processing sketch that will load that data and give you a grid uh, anomaly mag magnetic anomaly map with grayscale or color contours so you'll have grids and for each uh, entry uh, data entry on your SD card um, it'll plot a map of what you discovered beneath the soil the uh, magnetic anomalies so that will come later um, we want to get a basic gradiometer design uh, that's working well first and adding the GPS and the grid mapping software will be quite a coding endeavor so that'll come later um, this year uh, depending on how well things go that may go into early next year So, 
But uh, that's pretty much it for the audio functions of the gradiometer.